Hello, my name is Jeremy O'Shea. I'm in the School of Irish Celtic Studies and Folklore. And for many years, I've taught courses on Irish place names and personal names. And I've also spoken about these topics in Irish Studies courses and indeed in, in uh, lectures for the general public in the National Library on behalf of the University. I'm going to be talking today about some things to do with place names. Individual place names uh, are often matters of interest because somebody is curious about the origin of the name of the place where they live, especially if it's an Irish name which is now used in an English form, or perhaps a community wants to uh, put up some kind of slab or sign saying this is whatever the name of the area is. Individual place names can also, of course, be objects of controversy. Just think of Derry and Londonderry, or the controversy a few years ago about the name of Dingle Dangany Hoosh in County Kerry. But what I want to talk to you about is something else, because um, those are individual names, because on a wider span, across a territory or a country, place names can show very interesting patterns. Patterns which relate to history, and to geography, or to both. And I'm going to start off with some very interesting patterns in Irish place names relating to one aspect of history, namely the, the arrival of Christianity in Ireland about 1,500 years ago and the establishment of Christianity over the, the following few centuries. And I'm going to use, I'm going to show you some, using the document camera, show you some pages from a marvellous book called uh, the Atlas of Irish Place Names by Patrick J. O'Connor. Um, actually, the, the information, the kind, maps of the same kind, which you'll see in a moment, can also be seen on the, under the heading, I think, of resources on the website loganim.ie of the Place Names Office. But I must say that I think that the, the, the place names, as they're printed in ink on the page, come out rather better for our present purposes than the, the ones which are on the, the website, and I'm going to use those. Let's begin with, uh, by the way, what I, the, the elements which I'll be using, which I'll be talking about, are the, 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 the first element in place names. Um, very often, an awful lot of Irish place names have two parts. So, for instance, we'll be talking about Kildare, Kildare. The Kiel is what we call a generic. That's a whole lot of those. It, it relates to a whole class of names. And then the Dara bit is a specific. That's the, so it's the Church of the Oakwood. So I'm talking about generics. And let's go first to um, this one, um, word Dalmach. So I'm just get this now. Let's see if the map there is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty OK, I think. I'm going to just manoeuvre myself towards it. Um, the word Dalmach is a name for a church. It's the, the, the earliest name for a church building, rather than the church as an institution in Ireland. Um, it uh, comes from a Latin word, Dominicum, which means the, the house of the Lord, the Lord's house. A similar expression gave rise to the word Dalmach, meaning Sunday, the Lord's day, same idea. Um, its distribution is shown here on this map from the Atlas of Irish Place Names. The, the, the big circles are parishes whose Irish name begins with Dalmach, and then the small dots prefix. Those would be townland names and so on. There are a few of those names in Dublin, by the way. There's Dalmach Brook, quite close to us here, Donny Brook, and Dalmach Bath up in the north of Dublin, uh, down the beach. So the... Um, now, th th I want to say a few things about the distribution that we see here. This is an example of a clustered distribution. This element is not spread evenly throughout the country. It occurs in clumps, right? There's one there, there's one there, there's one up here, there's one down there. So there are a number of clumps, and there's large parts of the country which just don't get this at all. But it's the distribution of these clumps and the location of these clumps or clusters is very, very telling. Because if you look at where they are, this one here does one around what we recognize now as counties Dublin and Meath, which of course didn't exist as counties when Christianity arrived 
say around 1500 years ago, say around 8500 when the, the Christian church was beginning to get established here. Those counties didn't exist. But the real reference point for these names is that here um, is the mouth of the Liffey, and there is the mouth of the Boyne. And up here you have another cluster, of course close to the, the Lagan and Carlingford Loch. Uh, down here at Cork Harbour, some near Wexford Harbour. These harbours and river mouths and estuaries, they have always been entry points into the country for new cultures, for new inhabitants. Um, and Christianity, when it arrived, was a new culture. It arrived uh, in clearly in the, the same entry points, these river mouths, um, as previous cultures. After all, up there you have you have New Grange and so on. Uh, they did great Neolithic monuments that's a long, long time back before this. So looking at these again, you have a cluster there around um, the Liffey and the Boyne. Up here you have one in South Ulster. The South Ulster one is very interesting because it's, um, it corresponds to what is very definitely the area where Patricius, the British missionary Pat Bishop Patricius St. Patrick, worked. Um, Subsequent tradition has him, of course, going all over the, the country, except to my own county of Kerry, for some reason. <laughs> he didn't get that far according to tradition. But uh, we know that his mission was very heavily centred up there. Uh, and again, it's not surprising you have um, these names turning up there, Cork Harbour near Wexford as well. There's a cluster here in the middle, uh, in the South Midlands, um, and I think that the probable explanation about that is, well, possibly proximity to the Shannon, but more likely, I would say, the, the, the Shur and the Nore rivers, and, and early missionaries going up those rivers. They would, of course, have had to make some kind of, establish some kind of contact, first of all, with local chieftains, because there was no kind of rule of law or safety in those years, unless you had somebody to protect you. This, what this map does is it, it, it's a freeze frame of the earliest phase of Christian activity on the island about 1,500 years ago. It's frozen, fossilized in time by the fact that uh, it records for us the use of this uh, long, long discontinued word, Dalmach, for a church building. Um, so what this does, I said, this, this freezes um, a historical phase of, a, of culture on the country, in the country. Uh, I, I think myself that there's, that there's a beauty about this map. I can't describe it to any other. Now, that, as I said, was around AD 500, around 1500 years ago, when Christianity was beginning to get established. And, of course, the places where it is well established are, as I said, the traditional entry points of the country, near the east and south coasts, near the river mouths, and to some extent near navigable rivers. Now, what I'm going to suggest now is that we, um, we go forward um, a few centuries. Let's go forward from 500 to 800 to what the historians call early Christian Ireland, when the country has been, where Christianity has become pervasive and uh, the church and its buildings are more or less everywhere. By this stage, the word Dalmuk is no longer being used. And the, the, the word which is typically being used for a church building was the word Keel, C I L L, Keel. Um, Originally, it meant a monast monastic church, and um, of course, the, the, the church at that time was very heavily monastic influenced. Now, these are parishes called Kiel, and we'll come on to some other ones in a moment. But what you see here already is you're getting uh, a fairly um, an almost random distribution. The name is, apart from a certain weakness up there in Ulster, it's just very widely spread. Now, of course, no place name is going to ever be um, distributed in any mathematical sense of randomness. There will be certain uh, clusters and bumps here and there. But it, it's, it's, it's all over the country. This is pervasive Christianity about 1,200 years ago. Uh, if we go on to another map here uh, in this book, um, the next one following it, um, we have townlands, which are called Kiel. Now, there is... Um, this comes across better, of course, uh, in many respects. There is a bit of a problem about this map because uh, we can't be certain that all of these are uh, Kiel, a church. 
The Irish word Cuil, C-O-I-L-L, a wood, was also anglicised as K-I-L-L. We're not always absolutely certain whether a particular English name with kill is originally church or wood. Of course, in the case of parish names, we know that parishes aren't going to be called after a wood. They're going to be called after a church or something. But this, in a way, this is rather, uh, it's a more striking image. And let's just pretend for a moment that there is no issue with any of these. Uh, it, probably an awful lot of them are, in fact, it, probably most of them are key churches. Um, you have this kind of a it's fairly random distribution. I just want to comment. You see it also on the, in the previous map, the one which is definitely the key church. You see it there as well. But it's rather more striking here because of the black dots. And it is this, that there are blank, there are blank spots. You see that Donegal, the west, of, what is it, the west coast of Connacht, and places like this, and this, and this. Um, in fact, the reason why those are blank is um, because they were not you know, thoroughly inhabited areas, a place where very few people lived. The west coast of Ireland, the west coast of Connacht and Donegal, were, had a very sparse population until relatively recent centuries. It was the, the population increase before the famine which drove people to those areas. But historically, in earlier times, the west coast of Ireland was not heavily populated, with two exceptions, the Burren, still an area of very rich archaeological heritage going way back, and also the Kerry Peninsulas. So along here, and really you're talking about the southwest, where it's just that bit less windy and weather probably a little bit better and better land um, at that time, and that's, that's the reason for that. Also, the Wicklow there, you'd have had the, the wooded hills of Wicklow and the Moran Mountains, the, the, the Gillicuddy's Reeks and Kerry, and in other, some other places where more uh, sparrows and so on. In earlier times, hills and mountains, when they were heavily forested, were simply not places you went unless you were trying to get away from somebody or hide, get away from your enemies or something. But they were full of bandits and people you didn't want to have to do with. Uh, so that's the explanation for that. But apart from that, we have at this stage um, very widespread distribution of church buildings throughout the country. This is pervasive Christianity. You, we've gone from 500 to 300 years ago, this big cluster. Now, look at this one here. Sorry. Yeah. Now, this is rather more striking, and we're getting close to what I want to say to you. Uh, this is what called, uh, it's, it's a word for a um, a kind of a smooth top hill, a low hill. But you can see they're very striking clustering in this particular area. Again, South Ulster, roughly. South Ulster North, what's now North, Leinster, the joining parts of Connacht. Right? Let's just move on. Look at a few more. There aren't as many examples as what Mullach, Mullach, I would say, Mullach. It's a summit, a top of a hill, hilltop. But again, and again, this is like these other words, you get it in all counties, you know, but there's an awful lot of them there, right? Same place, South Ulster and adjoining areas. The word Tullach is, uh, and Tullach Moor is Tullamore, the big hill. It's one of the various words in Irish for a hill. And again, look at the, the same area, right? The whole of them around that particular area there. Now, maybe we should get to the point. I could show you some more. But look at this one. Dream. Dream is a ridge. It's the word said for a back of a person or animal as well, but it's in, ge in geographical terms and place names, it means a ridge. Now, you get it in lots of places. It's all over the country. There's quite a few of them in, in uh, Munster there. But look at this big clump here, again, this big cluster in South Ulster. And of course, what we have there, what we're looking at, is the geographical region called the Drumlin Belt. And the Drumlins are these low, rounded hills. Uh, they're of glacial origin. There are a whole lot of them. It's the most distinctive landscape, um, especially the western part of the Drumlin Belt there around Cavan and so on. I've driven through it, and you have these hills and 
often wet ground between the little ponds and small lakes. This is the, historically the geographical boundary between Ulster and the rest of the island. It was impass impassable for English armies in the time of Elizabeth I. It has always been, uh, people keep talking about the border and border security. It is one of the most insecure landscapes you can imagine because of geography. It um, has been pointed out it's an area of, of narrow horizons, of close horizons, of close-knit communities, with a very distinctive naming culture. And that's what we're seeing here, that this hill, this hilly area, has um, a very huge number of its townlands, most of its townlands, I reckon, must be called hill of some kind, called after one of the words for a hill. And this is a, a most interesting geographical pattern. It's a, there's rather more of it. I'm just showing you some of the more striking ones. So this is a pattern which has geographical significance and it, it relates to a particular well-defined um, geographical region, as I said, the, the, this uh, physical boundary between Ulster and the rest of the country. The English word Drumlin, D-R-U-M-L-I-N, comes from an Irish word Drimni, little ridge, little hill. Uh, I, think, I think it's quite striking, this, the way this, this, this pattern keeps recurring in various place name elements. Um, so those are, uh, we've now looked at two, uh, what I think quite striking patterns, uh, as opposed to individual place names, which we can see in Irish place names, which are very well illustrated in that book, The Atlas of Irish Place Names. Um, one of them is that it's historical, relating to, uh, relating to the, 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 the arrival and establishment of Christianity in the island. And the other is geographical, uh, whereby a geographically, uh, topographically distinct, a distinct landscape has attracted its own place name culture, as it were, where just about everything is named after small hills. So thank you, and uh, th this is just a, a small idea, gives you a very small idea of the wealth of information about history and culture and geography, which is to be found in our place names. Thank you very much.